PlayStation Vita emulation has come a long way. When I first tested out Vita emulation, it really wasn't all that usable. Vita 3K, the one PS Vita emulator, was in its infancy. I tried out the Vita version of Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartending Action, and there were visual glitches, which was unusual, especially for a game that can run on basically any potato computer. I also tried out one of my favorite Vita games, Muramasa Rebirth, and it wouldn't boot up at all. Months later, they've made significant progress with Vita 3K. We covered that as well. Aside from some minor visual glitches, the game seemed to run pretty decently. Of course, it's been a couple of months since we last did a PS Vita emulation video, so I think it's about time we test out Vita emulation once again. Vita 3K is not available as a flat pack on the Discover app. Your best bet for setting up Vita 3K on the Steam Deck is to get Emu Deck. Why Emu Deck? Emu Deck is extremely simple to set up. It also sets up multiple different emulators for you, if so desired. You also need to download PS Vita firmware to use with Vita 3K. You can download them from Sony's official website. There's also an optional but recommended step to download the firmware fonts in case you want to play Korean or Chinese games. You'll be prompted to set up a username. Just make one. You can also change the avatar as well, though I don't have one prepared so there's that too. Once you set up your username, log on to Vita 3K by pressing the username, click on the main screen, and then you're in the main menu. You have access to a couple of different applications. To actually install the firmware though, you will need to press File and then you'll need to press Install Firmware. You'll need to select the firmware version that you just downloaded, psvupdat.pup. The firmware font file will also come in a PUP format, so be sure to install that as well. There you go, now your Vita emulator has the latest firmware installed. To install an actual Vita game onto your Vita 3K emulator, press install.zip or .vpk and select your zip or vpk file. You'll want to select the zip or vpk file that you hopefully ripped yourself, or more accurately, probably downloaded off the internet. The game will install as well as any DLCs or updates that have been included, and you'll be ready to play. Repeat this for any other games you want to install as well. You also have multiple different extra options for managing the game. You can right-click each game to see game compatibility, app information, etc, etc. You can also delete these files as well by right-clicking, selecting delete, and then just whatever you want. Do keep in mind that games need to be decrypted off of a Vita, so not all Vita ROMs are decrypted off of the internet, but some are, and some require the use of work.bin files to install as well, so just keep that in mind. You should change the renderer from OpenGL to Vulkan. You can also choose to upscale the internal resolution, though I won't bother with that. One of the cool things about the Vita is that clicking onto a games page also includes includes a manual for the game, as well as, you know, links to websites, etc, etc. Was this absolutely necessary? Not really. But the fact that this was a thing on the Vita itself and also on Vita 3K is simply put amazing. So without further ado, let's talk about some games. We start off the video with a game from Vanillaware, Dragon's Crown. Who'd have thunk it, right? High Tech Low Life making a video talking about Vanillaware games? The game works reasonably well, only really frame dipping when a new shader has to be generated. The main issue here, though, is that there's this audio crackling. The game runs at 60 FPS most of the time. It's just that the audio crackles all the time. It's been a long-standing Vita 3K issue for quite some time now. Given that Vita emulation is still somewhat behind, it's understandable that they haven't had time to focus on this one issue. That said, Dragon's Crown was also released on PS3, and now that I think about it, I probably should have tested that at least once. But given Odin Sphere Lathershade runs really well on RPCS3, I would imagine Dragon's Crown running pretty well on Steam Deck. Here's to hoping PS4 emulation comes soon so we can play Dragon's Crown Pro instead. Or better yet, Vanillaware should just port Dragon's Crown Pro and all of their games onto Steam. Pretty please? Next up is Valhalla, Cyberpunk Bartending Action. I can think of literally no circumstances where it would be more beneficial to emulate the Vita version of Valhalla than it is to just play the PC version. Or hell, you could even emulate the Switch version of Valhalla, but I wouldn't even recommend that either. Just play the PC version. How does it run? Well, some effects have specific graphical glitches. One thing I never mentioned about Vita 3K is that Vita 3K emulates the trophy function of the PS Vita, aka if you would earn a trophy in a game, you would get a notification. You can also check all of your PS Vita trophies that you've obtained. As for Valhalla itself, it works well enough, I just wouldn't recommend playing this over the PC version. Next up is Muramasa Rebirth. 
Muramasa Rebirth runs pretty well all things considered, there's barely any frame dips whatsoever. That said, there is one issue that really irks me, it's the audio crackling. It's very similar to what happens in Dragon's Crown. It could be related to an audio codec that Vanillaware uses for their games on Vita. The game functions better if you use Dolphin. But that said, that said the Vita version of Muramasa is superior to the Wii version because it has a better translation and also it has exclusive DLC. Brand new side stories with brand new playable characters. That's not something you get on the Wii version, unfortunately. Fun fact, the reason why Vanillaware ported the game over to Vita as opposed to the PS3 and the Xbox 360 was because the Vita had an OLED display, and that the OLED display would better represent the game's palette. Next up is Metal Gear Solid 2 HD Edition. Truth be told, I can't think of a single good reason to play the Vita version of Metal Gear Solid 2 as opposed to, say, the PS2 original or the PS3 re-release. Vita emulation isn't perfect, and this is a prime example of it not being perfect. There are some visual glitches with it. Furthermore, the game runs terribly. The game definitely doesn't run at like 16 to 19 FPS on actual Vita hardware. Now let's talk about Odin Sphere Leifthrasir, a game that I've showcased a numerous amount of times through the PS3 emulator. And I'm trying it out through the Vita emulator, and it straight up does not work at all. The game ultimately fails to load. Period. Unlike Muramasa Rebirth, there's no real enhancements with Odin's Fair Leithrigi on the Vita. So just play the PS3 version. Now we get to try out Freedom Wars. Something we didn't mention in the prior video was how you input text. Typically when the game asks you to fill in some text boxes, the Vita takes you to this screen with the on-screen keyboard and a text field. But on Vita 3K, they expect you to type out your name with your physical keyboard. Or in this case, the Steam Deck's on-screen keyboard. This is actually pretty nifty. Wonder if they couldn't do this with other emulators that use an on-screen keyboard system. Like the last video we showcased, Freedom Wars runs pretty decently, if I do say so myself. I would say it runs even better than it did before. And would you look at that, you're going to prison for 1 million years. I didn't know we were emulating a Nintendo game. Next up is Killzone Mercenary. Last time we tried this game, it straight up did not work. It would not load and the emulator would crash. But as you can see here, Killzone Mercenary does work now. You can actually load into the game now. That said, after your first mission briefing though, the game would not load up. We waited a solid minute and a half before just calling it a day. So yeah, the game loads up now, which is a massive improvement over just crashing. But the game still doesn't really work. We still haven't actually played the game yet. Next up is Gravity Rush, a game that had numerous graphical issues. The cutscenes work. But what about the rest of the game? You can now see the environment, and the game runs at a locked 30 FPS. It seems to run at its native frame rate, and it runs without any graphical issues. There's no issues with audio either. This seems like this would be an actually good experience on the Steam Deck. That said, as for actually playing the game, I'm not sure if that's really a thing yet. There are quite a few Vita games that require either the gyroscope, or the touchpads on the back, or both. And you definitely need both in Gravity Rush. Gyro to manipulate gravity, and the touchpads to dodge and do gravity slides. That said, once they work on getting all of the games working, they can figure that step out later, I presume. Next up is Miracle Girls Festival, a game that also didn't work on Vita. Kyoko wanted to try this out, and it looks like it's working now. I've got no real complaints about this game. This game seems to work pretty well. No graphical issues, no audio issues. The frame rate could be better, but given we haven't seen any major dips in FPS, we've got no reason to complain. And finally, one last game, Love Live. This actually seems like a downgrade compared to what we had last time. Last time the game worked, but everyone had blue skin. Now the game just doesn't work. Given how early Vita 3K is in development, it's not that surprising. Vita 3K is in a much better state than it was before. Many games that didn't run before now run, and many games that ran poorly last time run even better than they did last time. With the odd one exception, of course. Many issues since then have been resolved. That said, there have been some long-standing issues that have yet to be resolved, especially with Vanillaware games, as both Muramasa Rebirth and Dragon's Crown have crackling audio issues. Odin Sphere Leithrasir straight up doesn't load, but that's a different story. Whatever the case is, the Vita 3K team, I don't know if you're watching this video or not, but if you are, you're doing a great job. Keep up the great work, and I'm sure more people will want to support you. And I do hope these VD3K videos are raising awareness for your emulator. If you like this video, be sure to press the thumbs up button and spread the good gospel of high-tech lowlife. And if you want to see more high-tech lowlife, be sure to subscribe and press the bell icon for notifications. And for you enlightened individuals, be sure to join my Discord server. And if you wish to support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description down below.